Hi, my name is Paula Hesse. I'm what's called a zooarchaeologist, and I work on animal bones that occur at ancient archaeological sites. So what I've selected for you to look at today is an array of different kinds of worked animal bone. That is animal bones that uh, were from animals that were almost certainly eaten, and the um, ancient people took these bones and they fashioned them in different ways to make them into implements because other things like wood was scarce in this area and metal was very expensive but bones were plentiful and available from the animals that they ate. So we're going to start with a selection of bones that begin the process of working, that begin the process of manufacturing a bone tool. So what I have here is a large horn that comes from a cow, okay? It's from a cow. And we can see here that it's very nicely sawn. They had all kinds of implements that would be familiar to you, and this one happens to be a saw, and we know it because it leaves a very even, clean edge. So they would have sawn the, this is called a horn core, and its actual bone it grows out of the skull, and they would have sawn this not so much to use the horn core itself, but around the horn core is a sheath like your nail. It's made up of the material like your nails are made up of, and that is what they're after. They're after this, this sheath, this keratinous sheath that surrounds this. So this would be a step in manufacturing something out of um, the uh, actual uh, horn core itself. Now this is very interesting because it also grows out of an animal's head. However, this comes from a deer, a rather large deer. It's part of a deer antler. Think of the reindeers you know for Christmas and think of the little prongs that the reindeer has on it and it would be an animal something like this. Now this you can see is very much smaller than the horn core from the cow, right? Because this is just a little tine that sits in the actual antler, the whole antler. This is what we would call an off cut. This is really too small for them to make anything out of this, but this is also very nicely sawn. We see a very nice even edge there, okay? And they would, this would have been an off cut. In other words, they would have been working down larger parts of the antler and this would be a discard. So they would saw this off and then fashion larger parts of the antler into uh, shapes or blanks that they needed to get the bone tool that they wanted. They did similar kind of preparation with the long bones in the body. The long bones in the body. So here what we're looking at, we're actually looking at a, um, an elbow joint, okay, an elbow joint of a camel, okay, and what they're trying to get is the bone in the long shaft portion, okay? So this is the end up here, right? And they would have sawn off the end down here, and they're looking to get this nice shaft portion because that's a lot of dense bone, and that's what they want to work. So this is also discard, but it's this kind of telltale discard. Here's another piece of camel um, elbow that we see also very nicely sawn. It's this kind of d discard that alerts us to the fact that they're actually working the bone here at the site because if we just find finished pieces of bone that just tells us that they were using finished pieces of bone but if we find actual steps in the manufacturing process we can tell that they were actually doing this at the site. Okay now what did they make out of, of these things that they are doing? Well, again, I said they wanted to get some nice, uh, nice dense bone. So here, for an example, we see this is the shoulder blade of a small cow, and we see that this is sawn. Now if they get the rest of the shoulder blade, they have some very nice thin bone that they could make decorations out of that they would then set into boxes. They uh, uh, set or mount onto boxes. We call them inlays or mounts. And they very often have decorative carving on them. Um, another thing that they would have made with dense bone is this example. This you'll see as soon as I get it out of the bag. This you'll see is what we call a throwing stick. And if you look at it closely, you'll see it has carved dots and circles all over it. And every side is different. Every side adds up 
between the two ends and the middle into a different number. And so they would usually use two of these and they would throw these sticks. I don't want to throw it too hard because we don't want to break it, but they would throw these six and see which numbers come off and put in little counters, okay? And that's how you would win or lose the game, by what you throw. So this is a dice kind of game, okay? What we see here is interesting because it is actually from a small animal, one of the main the main animals that they ate at sites here in the Middle East were sheep or goat. And this is actually a lower foot bone of a sheep or a goat. We can't tell which because the ends have been worked off and it's been worked. But here they've taken the whole tube, this is what we would call the shaft, the whole tube, and they've worked it with lines, horizontal lines and what we would call cross hatching. And this would actually be a handle. And if you look and you see this staining that we have here, and on this side as well, this is the tang or the um, the uh, tail of the implement, the hand, the knife probably that went into this handle, and so they would attach the metal implement into this this work shaft, and it would be a decorative uh, handle for them. It could have been a spoon, it could have been a small knife because this is a small bone. It's not going to be a, a heavy big knife, but something more delicate. Here we have a different kind of handle. This is made from completely dense, very dense bone. As you can see, it's absolutely solid, okay? This is in Roman, it's called a, in Latin, it's called a ligula. This is a handle for which something like a little spoon would be attached to it, and it was used for very delicate kinds of things. Maybe unguents and perfumes in solid form that they would take out of a bottle and put into something else. And we have quite a number of these. This too has been decorated very simply. You see these horizontal lines carved around it. Okay, so this is a simple handle. Some of them are much more complicated. Okay, and finally, I want to show you a picture of an inlay the kind that they would have gotten from the bone that they would have gotten from these larger bones or even from the shoulder blade. And here you see this is a, a rather large piece. This would probably have been put into a box or a chest or something like that along the border. And you see these dot and circle decorations. They were very fond of those and this little kind of feathering pattern that we have here. This is very, actually a very common pattern that we see in various forms on boxes. And here you can see a rivet hole. This is where they would have put probably a bone peg and this would be part of the attachment of, uh, of how this inlay was attached to the box of the chest.